actual facts to snack on and chew. Welcome to this new episode of Fact Heist. The Science Overkill Channel. Today we're gonna talk about the grim reality behind frontotemporal dementia. It's gonna be a tough one. Given the devastating toll it takes on its victim and their families, this degeneration disease ought to be better known than it actually is. This disorder is always fatal, and people suffering from it can end up displaying so strange behaviors that their close ones can barely recognize them. Dementia is often associated with elderly, but sometimes shit happens, and in rare cases, younger people can get their life devastated by something called frontotemporal dementia, which we will refer to as FTD from now on, because, come on, and this awful disorder can unfortunately rapidly turn anyone from young, cool and vital into someone who needs constant care. So okay, FTD is a form of dementia right? But now you ask, WTF is dementia in the first place? Don't worry, fact heist got you covered. Dementia refers to a disorder in which, Symptoms involve some kind of progressive impairments, like a decrease in thinking, planning, memory along with behavioral stuff. This can surface when the brain is deteriorated by injury or disease, and leads to negative effects and outcomes in a person's ability to deal with everyday's life type of shit. Those disruptions of thought patterns often produce symptoms like emotional problems, decreased motivation, decreased social skills and difficulties with language. And that's indeed what goes on with frontotemporal dementia. Because the brain area is impacted by this neurodegenerative disorder, the very structures chilling in the frontal and temporal lobe deal precisely with those cognitive functions, like judgment, speech and social behavior. Therefore people suffering the ordeal of FTD may have difficulties maintaining ordinary and conventional social interactions with people and shit. This may end up with stealing, neglect of normal responsibility or display of highly impolite and socially inappropriate behavior. Some other commonly associated effects of FTD can range from cognitive to motor symptoms like loss of speech and language, but more on that later, compulsive or repetitive behavior, penny, penny, penny. memory loss, stiffness and balance problems, screaming, dissociation with family, decline in personal hygiene, and even weird shit like increased appetite or compulsive buying. True story. There are different subtypes for FTD and the presentations of symptoms are often used to establish the very subtype of FTD people are dealing with. The three main types of frontotemporal dementia are, behavioral variant FTD, then primary progressive aphasia, and then non-fluent variant primary progressive aphasia. The first type of frontotemporal dementia, the most common, is this behavioral variant thing. This very subtype previously known as Pick's disease, has been discovered between 1892 and 1906 by some dude I can't remember the name. Pick's disease is a term now only reserved for this behavioral variant of FTD. The mandatory characteristic for this variant, are the pick bodies. This thing, some kind of spherical inclusion bodies you can find in the cytoplasm of the affected brain cells. Side note, the cytoplasm can be described as the juice of the cells or some shit like that. Those pick bodies are made of some protein called tau. In every day's life, the main job of those tau protein is to provide some kind of scaffolding, some structure for some neurons axon, this thing, but in FTD, these proteins clump together into microfibrils, and this is more or less how you get a pick body. Fun fact, those pick bodies things have been discovered in 1911 by Alois Alzheimer, yeah, the dude from Parkinson's disease. But FTD shouldn't be confused with Alzheimer's disease, first, because they have very different clinical manifestations, and then, because unlike Alzheimer's disease, FTD does not include the formation of its typical amyloid plaques. As it was discovered quite early, this variant form can be recognized as some kind of prototypical version of frontotemporal dementia. The symptoms of behavioral variant FTD are really low-key at first, with subtle change in behavior, personality, emotions and executive control. Nothing serious, shit like forgetting to return phone calls or emails, no biggie, at first, then it can progress into being self-centered, into displaying compulsive behavior and most of all, socially inappropriate and unacceptable behavior, like being erratic or acting childlike or disinhibited or some shit. In rarer cases, symptoms can pop in opposite ways, as regular behavior can change to being listless or apathetic. And most of the time, people afflicted with this are rarely aware that anything has changed. This type of FTD is four times more likely to happen than the other variants, and exhibit the most severe brain atrophy and cortical degeneration out of the three types, and more than 10% of afflicted people may eventually develop motor neurons disease. Bummer. This behavioral variant displays six distinct symptoms. Compulsive behaviors, with, sometimes, something called perseveration, it is the repetition of a word, phrase, or gesture, despite the absence or cessation of any stimulus. This thing. Will Wheaton! 
We're waiting. Wait, how many was that? Hyperorality, aka the compulsive need to put edible, or even inedible things in the mouth. Symptoms also include loss of empathy, which can unfortunately end up producing impulsive criminal behavior. You're gonna have to take me! Apathy and inertia are part of these six symptoms too, but they are not as flamboyant as the next one, disinhibition, because remember that social norms understanding and doing this are fucked up, so that makes sense. The last symptom, as I think I told you before, are all of those disexecutive neuropsychological features you can picture in your mind when you think of dementia, I mean, all those dysfunctions in executive functions, judgment, abstract thinking, planning and behavioral control. Of those six clinical features, at least three must be present in someone to be diagnosed with behavioral FTD, instead of something like Alzheimer's or some shit. The next of the three type of frontotemporal dementia, because what I just described was just the first one, no shit, so the second type of FTD, is semantic variant primary progressive aphasia FTD, that's a tough grouping of word, I know, and it involves language. Because frontotemporal dementia can happen in the temporal lobe, remember? And given the fact that all the language magic happens mainly in the temporal lobe, the main impairment is with language, that makes sense. By the way, aphasia refers to some disorder that affects how you deal with language, whether it's with production or understanding. In this case, primary progressive aphasia, people display difficulties with word comprehension, as well as problems recalling certain words. This progressive aphasia erodes the functional ability to use, understand or construct words in a spoken, or even written sentence. However speech remain fluent despite being some word salad type of shit, aka schizophagia. Speech that's so disorganized, you can't make any sense of it. Then, at last, comes the third type of frontotemporal dementia, non-fluent variant primary progressive aphasia. That's a tough grouping of words, I know, and it still involves language. But this time, it's about the physical mechanics of speech. People with this progressive non-fluent aphasia thing thing, have mucho mucho trouble in language production, I mean the movement pattern of the mouth and shit. So it can start with stutter or wrong phonemes, I mean sounds, to hesitant speech, to effortful speech, to no more speech at all. On average, the gradual onset and progression in language deficits or changes in behavior often begin way way before having any neurologist looking for anything wrong. And you're probably asking yourself what actually goes wrong in FTD too. Don't worry, I'll explain. But uh, if you don't mind, I'd still like to pause for effect. <clears throat> now. As a matter of fact, frontotemporal dementia is linked to a pathological process called frontotemporal lober degeneration. Basically, that's a progressive neuronal loss predominantly in the temporal lobe, mainly for the speech part, you know, but also the frontal lobe, in particular in some of its crucial part, the anterior cingulate cortex. The anterior cingulate cortex is, to some, the most evolved high-tech next-level shit part of the brain, because it is involved in dealing with decision-making, reward anticipation, task anticipation, performance monitoring, error detection, motivation, modulation of emotional response, attention allocation, impulse control, conflict monitoring, social evaluation, but most of all, ethics and morality. Told you, high-level shit. Fun fact, this highly evolved cognitive brain area, the anterior cingulate cortex is smaller and less active in right-wing conservative people. I will let that one sink in. So apparently, science hippies proved, unarguably, and all around the world, with PET scans and fMRI whatever whatever, that rightists haven't got the latest version of the human brain. Period. You draw your own conclusions. This anterior cingulate cortex things also shelters the most evolved high-tech next-level shit neurons, von Economo neurons. These von Economo, or spindle neurons, just appeared really recently in evolutionary terms, and act kinda traffic controllers for emotions. As they are at the center of human social emotion circuitry, but also moral sense, which makes sense. They are the most unique neurons in the human brain. These slow developing cells predominantly nestle in the anterior cingulate cortex and the insular cortex. But guess what, this rare emergence of spindle neurons also occurred in really distant and distinct species too. These relatively large brain cells are found in great apes, I'm sure you guessed that one, elephants, and then cetaceans. This suggests that von Economo neurons represent an adaptation to allow better faster communication across larger and larger brains. So there's some convergent evolution at play here. They occurred to deal with the increasing volume of these distantly related animals' brain. Side note. Spindle neurons are considered really rare in evolution, and interestingly, they are three times more abundant in cetaceans than in humans. And interestingly, some douchebags still kill them. 
But what is all this spindle neurons has to do with frontotemporal dementia? I'm glad you ask, well guess what? It's been noticed that von Economo neurons are the very first to catch this frontotemporal beatdown. As they are selectively targeted, a typical loss can reach up to 70% of these spindle neurons, while other neurons may remain intact. Uncool. Before FTD will eventually destroy the entire neocortex, it takes out spindle neurons first, because they are really recent, therefore expensive, therefore vulnerable. So FTD, in this case the behavioral variant, will specifically aim for von Economo neurons, which are stored exclusively in the anterior cingulate cortex and the insula, remember? But those two very brain areas, put together, form the salient network, a connection system in charge of detecting and filtering pertinent sensory data. It also vastly contributes to other complex functions like communication, integration of cognitive information, self-awareness and of course social behavior. The uh, part of the prefrontal lobe, which they say is the seat of good manners. And then you can start to understand why the destruction of von Economo neurons, or more broadly the salience network, may end up with social norm violations or some shit. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Be quiet, be quiet. That's how I'm gonna be up against your ass. I'm gonna be like this. <laughs> Furthermore, the buildup of pick bodies, the structurally abnormal tau protein clumps from earlier, remember that? So this accumulation of tau proteins may lead to some kind of bloating, ballooning, of these brain cells. This tau aggregation and swollen neurons are the hallmarks of FTD, and then neurons eventually die prematurely, which then causes brain tissue from the anterior cingulate cortex, to shrink. And then as this anterior cingulate thing thing is structurally, and therefore, functionally impaired, it becomes harder and harder to accomplish difficult tasks, resist impulses or afford an average level of social sensitivity or social awareness. As tau protein accumulation and damages slash shrinkages spread, the symptoms of frontotemporal dementia gradually get worse over time. This progressive neurodegeneration, of at first, one subtype of FTD, may then lead to an overlap of different subtypes, as there's a propagation of damages to different lobes of the cortex. And then a patient that would, quote marks, normally display symptoms from only one subtype, will then exhibit more and more symptoms from multiple subtypes, and this shit progressively worsens over time at a rapid and steady rate. In later stages of FTD, most people become more and more unable to perform tasks that require complex planning. Sorry, I was taking a selfie while shooting a Snapchat, while periscoping that Snapchat, while Instagramming latte art, while shazamming the weekend, while streaming Master of None, while retweeting George Takei, while saying, this wins the internet, while still being hashtag so bored. They will struggle to shut down compulsive behaviors, and changes in habits as well as cognitive deficiencies are more and more noticeable. For example, as previously seen, they can engage in binge eating, like whatever they find, sometimes even inedible objects. These cravings can be associated with atrophy, or shrinkage, in the insular cortex and orbitofrontal cortex. Some weird shit can also happen, like frontal release signs. That's the reappearance of old primitive reflexes, often evidences for brain tumors or in this case, dementia. For example, there's resurgence of the palmomental reflex, which is only supposed to be happening in babies. That's a primitive reflex consisting of twitching the lower lip when the palm is scratched or some shit. Look, told you. Did you know about this one? Now you do. Thanks to me, you're welcome. Eventually, patient will need a 24-7 attendance for care and assistance. And because frontotemporal dementia gradually corrodes the brain, it will, in the long run, cause bodily function to shut down, and then ultimately lead to death. Accordingly, people suffering from frontotemporal dementia can survive for 2 to 20 years on the average. Some people may live with the disease for many years, while some others may lose the fight more quickly. Unfair. With one-third of all cases of FTD running in families, there can be a strong genetic component involved, I mean one-third of the time. And there's a major contributor for this familial version of FTD, it is often linked to a mutation on the gene c 9 orf 72 This one was for the only dude who would care about that, but who'll never know about this video anyway. What about treatments then? Is there some medicine, or maybe a vaccine? Jadi tolong dengarkan saya baik-baik. Tidak ada obat. Dan tidak ada vaksin. Unfortunately, at this point, there's indeed no cure for FTD. At best, tailored medication can help to manage some of the symptoms or slow the rate of progression. Not fair either. However, medication can be helpful in reducing aggression, depressive states, disinhibition and other compulsive behaviors. Shit like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Nonetheless, nothing can stop it. Sadly, as many cases are, at first, misdiagnosed as some other mental illnesses, 
the proper care can't be provided in the beginning, and then after countless and expensive brain scans, people get an accurate diagnosis after an average of three years. But the fact that someone who's not an elderly suffers dementia is often the sign there's a strong likelihood it's FTD. As the Dr. Bruce Miller says, the dude is like the world leading expert on frontotemporal dementia, so I think he's legit enough, so as he said once, FTD robs us of our very essence. Of our humanity. Of who we are. And unfortunately, most of the money that could be used to find a cure for these people, and many many more, is spent on what's more efficient to destroy lives. Sick sad world! And that's it for this episode, I hope I haven't been disrespectful to anyone in any way, and everyone here at Fact Heist hopes you've enjoyed it. As usual don't forget to like and subscribe or I'll have to fire someone, so it's up to you. Thanks again for watching, see you next time, peace.